What's going on everybody? Alex here at Nickens Lawn and Landscape. We got 24 hours until a snowstorm and what do you know? We're scrambling. All right, so about two weeks ago, I bought nine pallets of salt and I thought that was gonna hold us over for the rest of the winter. To be honest, I was kind of nervous to buy that much. Um, I almost bought less than that. So we have since burnt all of that up. Uh, the only stuff we have left is what you see behind me and that is all sidewalk salt. Uh, we got about a pallet and a half of that. We got some calcium on top of there too. Um, but, but that's what we've got for our sidewalk salt. If you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Subscribe, come on. We are totally out of our, uh, our regular rock salt. So as we speak, I'm waiting on a tractor trailer load, 18 more pallets to show up. And we have already burnt through 36 pallets this year. So uh, big winter for us, uh, to say the least. I've never had a winter this big since I've been doing uh, snow removal or lawn care, any of this stuff in general since I've had my business. I've never had a winter this big. So it's pretty cool to experience this. For us in St. Louis, we really don't get this that often. Uh, we only average probably three events a year. And uh, I've been out dozens of times. Um, we've plowed, I think, three times. And then uh, we've salted, I don't know, probably two dozen times. So it's been a very, very good year for us. Um, super, super happy, super thankful for that. But uh, it's, it's just one of those years, you know, it, it is what it is. And uh, here, you know, in the next 24 hours, we got another event starting and that is supposed to be uh, five, or I think they're calling for six to 10. So uh, I was gonna say five to eight, but I think it's up to six to 10 now. So another big storm for us, the third big snow of the year. And that is just 100% unheard of for us. So like I said, very thankful, very happy. Um, I want to talk about these salt spreaders real quick. Uh, this is what we're running right now. This is what we've been running. This is the one I actually screwed up. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw that I backed into a pole, my third one of the year. Never backed into a pole in six years. And uh, this year, three times. Um, but basically what happened is this little shaft, it's actually the shaft that goes all the way up into here, but it's a little, a little rod right there, that guy got bent, so I took it to my buddy Austin with Wolf Fab. Uh, those of you guys that follow me, he's the one that built the ramp on the uh, box truck that we had for our mowers. But he straightened that out and we're all good. It's not rubbing, everything's all good. Uh, but that one was out of commission for the past two weeks. Probably could have fixed it quicker, but I'm a procrastinator. And now we got this one, which is identical. So this is the one I've been running for the past couple weeks. Um, this one, I don't like as much. It's got the plastic spinner on it, which works fine. Um, but to be honest, I like the metal spinner better because you can hear it and you can go off of sound a little bit better with the metal, metal spinner. I can kind of tell based off the sound what I'm, what I'm throwing. And yeah, you can look at the controller and all that too, but I don't know, it's just kind of a Old school thing for me, I guess. I just like being able to hear it. I don't know, but I do like that metal spinner better. Um, and I'm pretty sure that is an upgrade because the guy that I bought that spreader from gave me this along with it. Which is the plastic spinner. And you can see there, it's actually wore down right there. It's chipped on that end. Um, it's starting to wear down right there a little bit too. So, um, you know, it, it's... I don't know. I think it's kind of a no-brainer. The metal one's better. Um, I'd like to upgrade the other plastic one to a metal one, but we'll see about that. But uh, those are the spreaders that we've been running. And I actually bought this one about a month ago. Um, this is the, I think it's the SHPE. It's right there. SHPE 2000. So it's the uh, Salt Dog or buyers V-Box. I uh, haven't even used it, to be honest with you. It's got, uh, came with three controllers. Two of them were screwed up. I heard these ones were horrible. Um, and they kept just breaking. They were made in like China or Japan or something. And they were just junk. So he gave me two of those. Both of those do not work. Um, and then he gave me this one. And this one does work. And then this right here has only been used twice. That's dust on it, not salt. So that's pretty much brand new. Um, but yeah, I got that and haven't even used it. Uh, we really just 
just uh, like the tailgates, to be honest with you. It's nice, it's easy, it's really easy to manage salt when you're running bags. Um, I did have a V-Box for one year, so I have experienced the V-Box, it was three years ago. I had a salt dog, it was a gas. It was horrible, I, it, was, it was horrible, but it was because of the engine. It was not because of the brand or anything like that. The engine just was on its last leg and it was a horrible experience. Um, but that aside, I could not control the salt on it at all. Uh, you could not, I couldn't find a sweet spot. Um, it was either dumping out way too much or it would work good for a little bit and put out the right amount and then it would get clogged up. So that's kind of, uh, that's you know that's my experience with the V-Box and again I had a gas engine and those of you guys that run V-Box you know what I'm talking about it, it was horrible uh, it was a nightmare this one being electric it would be way better I probably will run it eventually I just don't want to mess with it right now to be honest I love the way those TGS 05 B's are spreading we literally get a perfect spread and we don't do gigantic parking lots guys I do a couple we have three pretty big parking lots where it would be nice to have a V-Box. But other than that, all of our other properties, and we have about 30, so 27 of our properties, say, are small to medium-ish, smaller size. Um, and then those three are pretty big. So for the most part of our route, it really is more convenient, in my eyes, to have bags, to be able to go there and know exactly what you need. I can count up before I even leave the house what I need with me, make sure I have what I need, and roll out. I had experiences or uh, times in the past where going out with the V-Box and then you run out and you still got a couple properties left and you're like, oh crap. So again, I did not have the best V-Box, so I'm sure that could be much better with a good one, but I just like the bags. I don't know, personally, it's just, it's easy, it's reliable, we can store them here in the shop. I have a place to store them. Um, I have an old shed that I can put them in and they can stay dry. I left, I don't even know how many it was, six or eight pallets in there. Um, each, over the past few years, I've been left with five to 10 pallets over the summer and it doesn't really matter. It just sits over there and, and it is what it is. And on a two inch snow, we'll run through about four pallets. So that really only gets us a couple storms. And I try to set it up that way. Um, this year has been by far the craziest year that we've ever had. And I'm ordering a pallet or a tractor trailer load on March 1st or getting delivered on March 1st. I ordered it yesterday, but that's just absolutely insane. Generally, we'll have maybe a salt event or a light plow in March. And it looks like over the next six to 10 days, we're gonna get hammered. It's possible that I will use all 18 of these pallets over the next seven to 10 days. So uh, it's gonna work out and I'm glad that I got this much. Uh, here in St. Louis, there is a shortage. People are running out, uh, people are panicking. And that's part of the reason why I got as much as I did. Um, if I am left with 10 pallets, so be it. But if we get the weather that they're saying we're gonna get, there's a good chance that we're gonna use the majority of this. So I'm not too worried about it. And we have had a really good winter, so the money really wasn't an object. Um, it is an object, but to be able to spend money on salt when we've used so much and made so much money off salting this year, it definitely wasn't something that uh, was gonna hurt us or prevent us from doing anything we need to do for our spring stuff. So um, that really wasn't a, wasn't an issue and it's just something that we need to do. So, so we've got plenty of sidewalk salt, as you saw in there. We've got over a pallet of that and we're getting ready to have plenty of parking lot salt. So we should be good to go. Uh, hopefully, hopefully not actually. I hope we need another trailer load, but I highly, highly doubt that. I just hope we're gonna get the weather that they're saying we're gonna get over the next seven days, because if we do, it's gonna be a real nice end to the 2019 winter. We can talk about the plows a little bit here too. I uh, haven't shown all of these, but we are all boss. This one is a 7.6 poly. Cutting edge isn't going, it's buried in the rocks. Um, but that's a 7.6 poly with wings on it. This is a 7.6 steel Super Duty with wings. And I get this question a lot, guys. I get this question all the time. What kind of wings are on these plows? These are pro wings, P-R-O wings. You can get them all over the place. Um, a lot of places that carry plow parts have them, but they're, they're handy. They definitely help a lot. It's a lot better than just having a straight blade. And then we've got this guy here. 
This is a nine foot Super Duty. Sticker's pretty much toast on that one. Um, but it's not a bad plow. It's got no rust holes. It does have these rust spots back here, but it's all pretty much surface. If we were to clean this one up, it would look really good. Um, still, still really solid. Like I said, nine foot. So this one's a beast, and this one does have wings on it too. Um, I'm gonna show you here in a second what that's gonna go on. But it's a nice plow. And then this one here, this one needs a little love. If anybody from Boss is watching this video, send me a rebuild kit. I want to make this one pretty again. That is an eight foot Super Duty. Um, again, no, no big rust really on it. I mean, it's got surface rust. It's been sitting outside, but it's not like roached out or anything like that. It's still solid. So uh, this one will be a good candidate to sandblast and paint it. It's got a hole right there and then it's got a little bit starting right there. But definitely be a good candidate to uh, sandblast and paint it. Um, when you do that kind of stuff, it really doesn't cost that much money. And that one I picked up for basically nothing. I bought that one. It works, everything works. I put it on my truck, lifted it left, right, up, down, all that good stuff, and drove home with it on my truck. But I bought that one in case, basically for an emergency, in case this one or one of those seven six goes down, we can come back here. What I'll do, if one of these goes down, I'm gonna drop it wherever it's at, leave it right where it sits, and I'm gonna fly home and put this one on. So I basically bought it uh, as a backup, and like I said, I didn't give too much for it, so it was well worth it. Um, but eventually, I'd like to put that nine footer on this guy. This here, if you don't follow me on Instagram, is a Chevy 4500 bus. It's an 08, it's got the LMM Duramax, just like that. And just like, not this dump truck, the other one over there. This one's the LLY, that's an LMM. And that other one over there is an LMM. So uh, I bought this because it has the same engine and because it's Chevy 4500 chassis. Then I turned around and bought this. This is the parts donor. This is an 03 Chevy 5500 with half of an engine. Uh, someone, it, something happened with the engine and they robbed it for all kind of parts. Um, so I basically bought it. We're gonna use the cab. We're gonna swap the dash and all the wiring out of this one. We're gonna lift this one off, cab and bus pretty much, and throw it in a scrap pile. We're gonna keep the dash and all the wiring. We're gonna put the dash and all the wiring in that cab and put that bed on there. Now this one's got a little bit more distance between the wheels, a little bit longer wheelbase. So we've got this tunnel box. So, and then I also bought this. This was kind of a, kind of an impulse buy here, but uh, that is a Chevy 5500 cab. And basically why I bought it is these mirrors are not cheap. And I bought the whole cab for less than I could buy the mirrors for if I bought the mirrors new. So. That's where that came from. Kind of looks like a junkyard around here, but trust me, I'm not that big of a Hoosier. I'm not collecting. I do have a plan and I am building this truck. Uh, just like we built all these trucks. If you guys don't follow us, when I bought these two trucks, they look nothing like they do now. So uh, I know what I'm doing, or we know what we're doing. We've done it before. We've been down this road and it's gonna be a sweet truck when we're done. It's pretty much gonna be identical to this one. Um, it's a 10 foot bed. It's got a tunnel box, just like this one, fold down sides, the whole nine yards. So it's gonna be identical to this truck. And right now, it looks like that. So use your imagination, guys. Trust me on this one, it's gonna be a sweet build. And if you're not subscribed, you should consider subscribing. You're gonna to wanna to follow this build. I hear him. Yep, there he is. Yeah. Yo, come out here. He's here. Takes money to make money. The last guy took out the mailbox. Let's see if this guy takes anything out. I think he's got it real close over here. Yep, 
You guys see me spending money, I see me making money. Real quick, I've shown you everything else. These are the shovels we use. These are called the Snowcaster. I've showed these in a couple other videos. Um, you can look that up. Sell them at a lot of different places. Basically, that's what you got. Kind of windrows it. If you're straight, you're pushing it over there to the left. And then when you get down to the end of the road and you want to turn around, all you got to do this handle folds over this way. And then you just simply flip it over. And now you're wind rowing it over to your right, which is to the same direction you just were before. So for driveways and sidewalks and stuff, these are nice. And then we don't do many driveways, but the ones we do. And then this guy here, this is just for breaking up ice and stuff. We got a couple of these as well. So nothing special on the shovels, but to be honest with you, we really don't use them all that much.
So that's pretty much it. That's what we've been up to, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. As always, we really appreciate your support. If you're not subscribed, be sure to consider hitting that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.